Well, you know, uh, since I got home from the mainland and had to be in quarantine, I never got to go to pedicure, so I'm standing up here behind the pulpit. Um, I want to have beautiful feet. What a funny thing to say, right? Beautiful feet of those who bring the good news of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Signs and wonders will follow. You will be my witnesses. Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Did you know that we're the uttermost parts of the world? I don't know if you know that or not. But if you stick a pin right through from Maui, it'll go straight to Jerusalem. <laughs> we are the uttermost parts of the world. How many of us have signs and wonders and miracles? You know, it's not about us. What is it? About his kingdom. So if we're not doing sign wonders and miracles and having beautiful feet proclaiming the gospel, then maybe it's more about us than about his kingdom. We didn't come into the kingdom. You know, Esther, the, Esther's uncle said, you, 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 you may have come into the kingdom for such a time as this. Why? For her? No, it was because he knew the opposition against the Jewish people and that she stood in the gap. That's what we're doing today. We're standing the gap. We don't come to church just to get something out of it. We come to get equipped so we can go out and proclaim the gospel and make his kingdom come on earth. Hallelujah. Well, you know, after Jesus proclaimed that, how many... How many want to know there were that something happened? The disciples did just sit there and say, Well, what do you know? Now he's left us, and here we sit. Hello. They knew exactly what to do. They had a job to do, and they were ready to go. Did you know that Peter went to Rome? That's quite a ways to go. You look on the map. And Greece. A Corinth, I'm sorry, Corinth. John went to Turkey and Greece. Andrew, Europe. <laughs> Imagine. Italy. Matthew went to Ethiopia. Thomas, India. James went to, stayed in Jerusalem and was the first father of the Christianity there. Paul, well, you know about Paul. He just made messes everywhere he went, proclaiming the gospel. I think he had beautiful feet. Paul must have had fantastic feet. Glory to God. But many were martyred, leaving a testimony. The church has been built upon the blood of the martyrs. In the second century, God continued to send forth labors. Ignatius, Polycarp. In the third century, Con Con Constantine made Christianity legal, which just blew everybody out of the water. There's always been a witness down through history of the glory of God. Do we have any carriers in the, in the place tonight? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I gotta turn this page here. No, what's wrong with my fingers? They don't want to work. Reminds me of when I opened coffee, those coffee filters. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just saying. Well, okay, so one of the, um, one of the church leaders began to seek God and he proclaimed there's, there's three things that make revival come. And so I'm, sign me up. Number one, restore Jesus. Number two, restore the Holy Ghost <laughs> to the church, amen? And number three, put the Father back in the charge of the church, the Father God in charge of the church, amen? 
Well, you know, um, the, the church has always responded to the issues of um, its environment. And I, I went through, down through the history of the church, and I was so excited to hear how God raised up a people. When, when, when the church was backslidden, they preached repentance. And when the church and the community got corrupt, they talked about reformation. And when sin came into the nation and it began to just be corrupt and, and evil, they talked about renewal. God raised up pastors and revivalists and evangelists who began to break down. You know what? When the church was sleeping, the preachers preached awakening. There was a great awakening. And when the church and when the culture is dead, guess what else they need? They need revival. Because <laughs> they're dead. The church becomes the kingdom of God on earth. If we're going to do what we have to do, we got to do it. We can't sit around and say, what's in it for me? Amen? Okay, I know, I'm getting, what do you call, distracted here. But I'm telling you, down through history, God has had a people. No matter how bad it was out there. He would raise up an evangelist that would begin to stir the people. And you know what? God doesn't look at your need. Oh man, I got a list of all my needs. But I'll tell you what God responds to. My hunger. He's not going to come in revival because you need him. He will respond to your seeking him. If we seek him, he said he would be found. He doesn't say, well, when you got a need, I'm going to come and bring whatever. He says, when you seek me, then you will find me. And down through history, there's been a multitude. God, oh man, you just really need to read it. In fact, I got so busy reading it that I forgot that the time was passing and I needed to come and preach. Because revival has gone down through history. God is faithful to raise up a people. How many want to be that people? I want to be that people to raise up a standard of righteousness in this world. Amen. You know, in the 1700s, the world says we are so smart. We're enlightened. How many ever heard about the enlightenment? Rationalism. Amen. Come on. We don't need God anymore because we're so smart. You know what happened? God showed up and he began to stir his church. God raised up a Jonathan Edwards. Anybody ever hear of Jonathan Edwards? He preached a sermon called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Well, you know, we don't want an angry God. We want a God that just honey and peanut butter, right? Honey and peanut butter. Don't tell me how to live. Just say it's okay. But he raised up people who would speak forth righteousness and repentance to the people. He raised up a man who's tough. George Whitefield in the early American colonies turned the place upside down. Why? Because there was so much evil God raised up a standard against it. You know, God's 
um, there was three great revivals. The first one came with God raising up uh, the standard against him and then came right after that, amazing to me, right after that, right following after that, missions and colleges. Why? Because God always follows revival with the mission. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Don't sit there and feel sorry for yourself. It doesn't get better, it gets worse. The, the, in, 19, in, in 1419, tongues of fire was poured out in a revival. In um, Brother Waldenness, I don't know if I can even say his name right, he was a preacher. In 1519, God raised up Martin Luther to declare, hey, do you know that all of these people were tongue-speaking people? You know, I thought, oh, well, you know, nobody spoke in tongues until, uh, what was it, 1906 when they had that revival. Oh, no, God had people. In fact, the greatest revivals that turned the world upside down was those when the Holy Ghost was just released and powerful anointing came. In fact, I, I got so tickled. I read the testimony of a brother named, um, what was his name again? I'm telling you, I read so many. I just, I, I'm sorry. Okay, Charles Finney. And Charles Finney says, I just started speaking in tongues. I, and he says, I didn't know. I didn't expect. I hadn't even heard anybody talk about it. You know how we always said, what's all in your head? No way, Jose, God filled him with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because he had a mission to accomplish through him. And he was so overtaken. He said he, he prayed and, and spoke in tongues all night. And in the morning he woke up and the sun came up and he said, never saw the sun like that before. It was a new day. Come on, a new day. A new day in Jesus. Hallelujah. And um, in, in, eight, in eight, 1650, the Quakers came along. You know why they call them the Quakers? Not because of the oatmeal. <laughs> when the Holy Ghost came on them, they couldn't stop shaking. <laughs> when the Holy Ghost hits you, you don't go just sit there like a bump in a log. The fire starts burning inside of you. It changes you changes you in 1834 Edmund Irving stood up and began to preach tongues and fire and God showed up in 1865 there's a mighty revival in England in 1878 Peter McKinsey spoke in 1882 Dwight Moody in 1844, Charles Finney, John Wesley, 1907, in Holland, Pastor uh, G.R. Pullman. <laughs> Come on, you think there's nothing in these names? I'm telling you, God showed up. And when they came to town, everybody else showed up. They spoke to 10,000 and 20,000 people at a time. God brought them. Why? Because there was a hunger. There was a seeking. Where am I? <laughs> I'm telling you. God did stuff. Are we content? It, really? Because honestly, this is a great church. God is doing amazing things. It makes me cry. But God has more. God is, God's looking for a catalyst, a carrier of revival to take it to the streets, to take it to the world, that they will see the glory of God, the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. And then there was General Booth that showed up. There was a huge, great Welch revival. And then there was the Zusa Street revival. And in that revival, I'm telling you, people came 
in the morning and wouldn't go home. Sometimes they spent several nights there, not sleeping, but in the presence of God. And out of that Azusa Street Revival, churches spawned everywhere. At the same time, the Azusa Street Revival in 1906, Chile got filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amazing signs and wonders. God began to move all across the world. You know, in 1970, America had gotten real complacent. In fact, kind of bitter and hateful. Kind of like, now. There was so much anger and division. And out of that time, God began to call a people. And there was a man named Lonnie Frisbee who was a drug addict. And God grabbed hold of him and he began a movement. And Chuck Smith joined hands with Lonnie Frisbee and they joined that Jesus movement in 1970s. 1994, Toronto Blessing. Anybody here ever heard of the Toronto Blessing? And the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. People from all over the world went to Toronto. Let me tell you what happened. It became, the church there, became the number one tourist attraction in Toronto. The number one tourist attraction in Toronto was the church. I went there one time. <laughs> I'll never forget it. You know, people are just falling out everywhere. You're just stepping over bodies. And I stood there, and pretty soon I'm laying there, like one of the other bodies. And the Holy Spirit's washing, and washing, and washing. What did he do that for? Because he had a call for me. He wanted me to go and take his kingdom. He wanted me to get some pretty beautiful feet. Well, what do we need today? We need an Azusa Street. You know, that one of the testimonies in the Azusa Street revival, a man was sitting there and there was African Americans, there was Latinos, there was any kind and every kind sitting around because people were hungry. And they began singing together. And, they sit, and uh, one reporter said, it's unprecedented to have that many Cultures, sitting together, praying together, singing together, loving one another. Come on, it's a sign and a wonder. A.C. Valdez brought the revival to Honolulu in the 50s. And out of that, churches began to multiply. Pastor Ann, you can tell me all about that because you were part of that ministry there. You didn't get saved under his ministry, but you got saved soon after, right? And God did amazing thing. So where are we today? Well, today we have got to see some beautiful feet. We need to take this gospel of the kingdom of God, not just in word, but in demonstration. There will be signs and wonders following the preaching of the word. And I'm just telling you right now tonight, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Yes, I have a tremendous need in my spirit. I know that. I understand that. But more than my need, I have a desire. I desire him more than anything else. Do we have to go out and go to work and take care of our re re responsibilities? Yeah. But every fiber in your being doesn't matter what you do or where you go, God can 
be that testimony. He can breathe. You're a carrier of the kingdom of heaven. You're a carrier of the kingdom of heaven. Not based on our need, but based on our desire. Is there anybody here that has a desire for God tonight? If you don't, Jesus said, if you don't put me first, then you're not worthy of me. What? Why? Because everything else gets to be an idol. Anytime we put, including your sweet little self, you become an idol if your comfort and your desires are more important than God. And I'm talking to the choir here tonight because each and every one of you are here. You're here. Why? Because I know you have a desire for God. But I am here with all my heart tonight to shake you. Wake you up. Stir up your hunger. It's not going to happen if you just sit back and say, well, somebody else will do it. It's not going to happen. So it only happened as we hunger and thirst, make it our total priority that God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So stand with me tonight. Lord Jesus. It's up to you now. I've delivered everything you gave me. But I'm asking God that you will shake this place with your Holy Ghost. Shake this place. Shake us out of our lethargy. Shake us out of our worldliness. Shake us out of our selfishness. May a spirit of repentance come upon this house. God, come. Holy Spirit, come. Bring forth a revival of our lives. Revival of our hearts. Lord, may we be a sign and a wonder to this world. Our generation has lost it. But Lord, when they see you coming in your kingdom, they will repent because that's what they do. They want the real thing. They want to know God. And Lord, this is the end time. We know you're coming soon and we want to see, Lord, a mighty revival in these last days. A mighty revival of your kingdom. A mighty revival of your power. Lord, work through me. Signs and wonders. Use me. I lay my life down as a martyr, if so be. Holding nothing back. Stir yourself up with your most holy faith. Stir yourself up. Stir yourself up. Wake up, church. If we don't stand in the gap and make up the hedge, who's going to? Rishelora, Dio, Masakura, Tata. 